Hey everybody, it's Carl from the Tinkerverse. So today we're going to do a little project on the Creality A1. Um, I recently did a review of this machine and I do consider it to be probably the best beginner-friendly laser on the market today for the price. Uh, right now they have a Halloween sale going on that it is, uh, it's less than $500 for a class one machine and you're not going to be able to beat that anywhere. So I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about what this 10 watt laser can do. We're going to do this uh, little uh, spider candle holder project from Falcon Design Space, uh, their online, um, you know, project database. And uh, it'll be cutting through both five millimeter and three millimeter plywoods. So uh, let's get right to it. Okay, so here I am in Design Space and you can see that this is what I'm looking at here. It's called Skull Hand uh, Candle Holder. And I guess that, yeah, you've got a skull hand holding a, uh, a spider which has a spot underneath it for a little tea light. Um, I would definitely recommend a little battery powered tea light, not a live candle uh, because we will be cutting this out of wood. Um, this project, while it says it's designed for the Falcon 2, uh, it's very easy to adapt this to the A1 Pro just by changing your machine and your, uh, and your uh, library settings. So let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and click make it and it's going to open up in the design workspace here and you can see by default it probably brought me to create the Falcon 2 down here for laser. I'm going to change it to the Falcon A1. Um, it's going to tell me it's not connected because I'm on my video recording machine. I'll uh, transfer this project over to my laptop when we're ready to run it. Um, but so we're on the Falcon A1. So the first thing I do want to do is bring this into the work area and make sure that it's going to be sized right and uh, yeah, this should be no problem. So 277, 278 high. Um, so this machine will do that easily. And I've got a piece of plywood that'll fit that no problem. And you can see this file's divided up into a five millimeter chunk and a three millimeter chunk for the different pieces. So let's focus on the five first. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Um, I don't want that to engrave for any reason. And let's set our material. Now they don't have birch ply here, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on basswood board and we'll set it to five millimeters and confirm that. And what I'm actually using is I'm using a five millimeter core ply. So it's got a, uh, a center um, core of uh, a softer material, an MDF or something like that with the uh, outer veneer of, uh, of birch ply on top and bottom. Um, I think it's the true flat boards. I don't remember exactly what they are, but uh, I'm pretty sure they're the ones I got from Houston Acrylic. Uh, so anyway, so first thing I want to do is take a look and take a look at my gap here and uh, where the skeleton arm is going to click into there. So if we look back at the project, you see you've got the base and then the skeleton arm sits in there. Uh, so that is currently set at 4.8 millimeters. All right, so I just want to double check that that 4.8 kerf is actually accurate. So I've got my material test card that I cut out um, in the review video, and you can see all along the edge, I've got kerf size settings here for a lot of anything from 2.75 up through 5.45. And this should be close to five millimeters. It's a core, uh, an MDF core uh, veneer ply. And if I check my settings here, so I'm gonna start at five and five is definitely too loose. So let's go down four nine or four nine five, four nine, still a little loose. Four eight five is close, but 4.8 which is what the project's set to. You can see that that holds nicely there, and that's about the fit that I want. If I go any smaller than that, I risk breaking the tab. So the 4.8 that it's configured for was spot on. So let's go ahead and load this in the machine. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set my focal height. So because this is, uh, let's see, this is going to be a cut on five millimeters. So we want the middle step here. Uh, so let's go ahead and set the focal height to the middle right there. Tighten that up. Okay. Close everything up. So we're going to frame it, make sure that everything frames out nicely.
Yep, looks like we'll have no problems. Okay, turn on the purifier. And off we go. Take a look. Looks like we got all the way through, no problems. And let's see how the fit is. So this would go, oh, that's nice. Yes, that is, oh, that is a perfect fit. All right, so there is so there is the first piece. Um, yeah, that fit is, it's snug. Uh, I don't want to break it there. So you just got to be careful putting it in and out. It's that tight of a fit. You can always file that just a touch if you needed to. But in the meantime, um, yeah, I think we're ready to move on. Wow, I like that. That is awesome. Uh, so we're ready to move on to the next part. All right, so I'm back in Falcon Design Space, and I had to make some tweaks to the um, to the layout of the parts for the three millimeter piece because I'm using a smaller piece of material. Uh, so I just had to kind of go through and optimize all of this. And what I did was I laid out a, um, if you can see it, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, let me bump up that to a different layer. Ah, da -da 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 -da. where's my layer colors? So that, let's just put it here. So I created a, a layer that is the size of the workpiece that I've got, which is 200 by 200 millimeters. And then I took all my bits and pieces and laid them out accordingly so that they fit within those boundaries. So there you go. So as long as I position that right, then, uh, yeah, so uh, we're ready to kick this off to the laser. So let me save this and go over back to the laptop. go. So the only thing left now is to get myself a small piece of string to hang that from. So let me do that and then we'll get some uh, final shots here. So there we go guys. There is our final product and uh, yeah the machine did a fantastic job at it. No problems whatsoever. So we've got five millimeter for the base and back and three millimeter for the candle holder. Put yourself a little battery powered uh, tea light there and you're good to go. Um, so if you like this video, if you are at all interested in purchasing this machine, please 
Uh, use the affiliate link below and give the channel a little bit of kickback so that I can continue to bring you guys tutorials and projects and, and machine reviews and everything like that. Um, otherwise, you know, do me a favor, make sure you like and subscribe to this, or, you know, subscribe to the Tinkerverse, like this video, and we'll catch you guys next time.